Okay, so how many were able to join us last week? Uh, either watching us or if you were here on site. A buddy did a great job, I think, of kicking off our new series uh, for Sunday mornings uh, on sewing. Sewing, it was just something that was just kind of really in our hearts that we felt God wanted us to center up on. So uh, we do our best to follow his lead. We don't want to just be out caught doing our own thing because there's very little value in that. And we've just learned that it's always good to, uh, to follow his lead and, and go the way he wants us to go. I'm sure many of you have found the same. But so I feel like I'm going to be referring to a few things that Buddy uh, said last week, but I feel like today's message uh, needs to have two parts to it. And the first part, we're going to focus more on, uh, let's just call them principles, okay, some principles that God has put into motion. And the second part, uh, let's call that application, how those principles work, uh, let's just say where the rubber meets the road, right, in our everyday lives. So I realize that uh, the things that I'm going to be sharing with you today, for some of you, I guess I'm extra excited about this. For some of you, it's, it's going to be an epiphany. It's going to be a, seriously, really, like a real light bulb moment. Uh, but for others of you, and myself included, this will be more of a reminder or a refresher that I believe is important as well. Okay, so, so you guys ready to go with me? Let's go. Ready or not. All right. So I want to look at four principles of sowing that God has set into motion. So here we go. Principle number one, if you sow, you will reap. We're talking about sowing here. If you sow, you will reap. In the Bible says, in way back in the, the first book of the Bible, way back in the beginning of things, Genesis 8.22, it says this, While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, shall not cease. You know, I, I think it's safe to say that you could call what we're seeing here as law or laws, okay? Something that's always in place, it's, it's not going to go away. It's like all of us, I'm sure, are familiar with the law of gravity, right? How many of you know that's just a thing, <laughs> right? It can work for you or against you in any particular situation, but it, it just seems to be law. It's not going anywhere. It's there all the time, right? Something that's always in place. It's a sure thing. Well, we just read here in Genesis 8, the law, God says something, he calls it the law of seed time and harvest. And I want to say that it's first, things that come from God are first spiritual. Because God, after all, is a spirit, right? So if it starts from him, it starts as a spiritual thing, right? Then, because the spiritual is true, the natural law is true as well, right? It's true in the physical realm because it's first true in the spiritual realm, all right? All right, so that's principle number one. If you sow, you will reap. Principle number two, what you sow, you will reap. What you sow, you will reap. And I got a, a few uh, verses here to, to undergird that. It says in Galatians 6, 7, New Testament scripture, the Bible says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. You know, the world, you've heard people talk about karma, right? The world, you know, calls it karma, right? What goes around comes around. Well, this started as a law, this is a law from God. What you sow, you will reap. Then a couple places, again, way back in the book of Genesis, the very first chapter, Let's look at a couple of verses. One is verse 11. This is when God is creating everything. And by the way, the method God used to create all that is, is with words. Really interesting. It says in verse 11, then God said, let the land sprout with vegetation. So he's creating all the vegetable life on the planet. Every sort of seed-bearing plant 
The trees that grow seed-bearing fruit, these seeds will then produce the kinds of plants and trees from which they came. And that is what happened. When God spoke it, it happened. Nothing got in the way of it, right? It happened. And then verse 24, it's kind of going down. If you read the whole first chapter, it, it, you know, bit by bit, it's going through all of God's creation, how he said, and then it happened. But notice verse 24, he's talking about he's speaking all the animal life into being. And it says, then God said, let the earth produce every sort of animal, <clears throat> excuse me, each producing offspring, notice, of the same kind, right? Livestock, small animals that scurry along the ground. Buddy has a thing about animals that scurry and are darting, small darting animals. You know, talk to him about that. So small animals that scurry along the ground and wild animals, and when God spoke that, that is what happened. So I, I think you're getting the picture here from these scriptures that I'm bringing to you. Like produces like, right? Like produces like. Corn seeds produce. Tomato seeds produce. Cows make. Chickens make. However, recently, I thought I came across a strange anomaly in God's law, and it took place, I'm going to get my phone out here, because I want to uh, read you guys a text thread, I've got it up here on the screen, just one, one at a time, please, the first one, could you bring that up, oh, yeah, there it is, all right, so the, the, the context of this is my daughter, uh, I, I told you guys we recently had our fifth grandchild, beautiful girl, and anyway, she's in the hospital, and, you know, because of the COVID thing, now she could only have two people. She had her husband and, and Ginny, right, while she was giving birth. And anyway, so I'm going back and forth. Ginny's trying to keep me updated through text. And, and so anyway, you know, along the way, I get a text from Ginny, and it says, well, this is from Jay, but she wanted me to know, baby's here, and everyone's doing great. I'll text you when you can come back in. This is from Jay to Ginny. Ginny wanted me to know that, and of course, I respond with the hearts, you know. And then I say to Ginny, take a pic, and, pro and I promise, tell Mal, I promise I will not post it, right? Because you, you ladies understand that, right? Right? So I, I just want a pic of the new baby just born, you know, and she says, okay. Here's the next thing I got from Ginny. You got the next one? I don't know how, how you can see that, but... <laughs> So here's the next, the very next thing. I said, send a pic when, when you can't send a pic of the baby. The next thing I get is this, this pic. And so my reply to Ginny was, she gave birth to a door sign? <laughs> what? I'm very confused. You know, what in the world? So, you know, I just had to, like, mess with Ginny about that. So this, is, this was her door sign of the room that she gave birth in. So, but I, so I thought, there's a glitch in the law of God, you know? I thought my, my baby girl was going to produce another baby human, you know, but she gives birth to this sign. So anyway, I realized it was a risk, folks. I'm starting to sweat a little bit up here. You, thank you for the kind laughs and chuckles. I really do. I really do appreciate it. But you get the point, right? The law is like produces like. You got it? All right, principle number three, we're just kind of going through these quickly. Principle number three, you reap more than you sow, right? You will reap if you sow, you will reap what you sow, and you will reap more than what you sow. You know, think about it just for a minute. If that was not true, no farmer would be in business, right? Right? If a farmer planted one corn seed and got one corn seed, one kernel of corn back, I mean, my brain's not lightning fast, but I'm thinking I'd probably do something else with my time, you know what I'm saying? All I'm doing is trading, you know, one for one. So <clears throat> you reap more than you sow. Here's a verse, just one example. I think it's kind of interesting the way it's worded. Hosea 8, 7 says, it's talking about some people who were kind of getting in trouble uh, with what they were doing. But he says, for they sow the wind, and what are they going to reap? 
not just the wind back, they're going to reap a whirlwind, right? You reap more than you sow. You know, last week, Buddy read from uh, Luke's Gospel, uh, chapter 8, about the parable of the sower Jesus was talking about and teaching. And Jesus said that the seed that was sown on good soil produced a hundredfold. A hundredfold. Think of that multiplying factor. One seed sown in Jesus' parable, he says, a hundredfold is, is the, the result from the one seed being sown. So think of that multiplying factor. Think about in just one seed, this kind of kind of messes with your brain. Think about just how in one seed, potentially, there's an entire forest. Think about it. One seed has the potential of creating a whole forest. Now, this is how God made it to work. You reap more than what you sow. It's law, just like the law of gravity. Principle number four, here's the last principle. And I, I got to tell you, this is the one that is strongest in my heart. This is really where my heart wants to go with you guys today, and we'll be spending the, the rest of our time. Principle number four, words are seeds. Words are seeds. Genesis 126 uh, tells us that we are made in God's likeness, in God's image. God says, let us make man in our image. And the Bible's very clear about how, what the intention that God had when he created man. And like him, we, we just read in Genesis the account of creation, you know, bits and pieces of it. It all happened by the words that he spoke. We are created in his likeness and his image. So guess what? Our words have power to set things in motion. Words are very powerful things. So powerful, I think this, what, there's so much in the Bible, it would be interesting for you guys just to do a study on the power of words, the power of what the Bible says about the tongue, about the words that we speak. This one seems to kind of, you know, put the period at the dot of the sentence and really encapsulate the power of it. It's Proverbs 18, verse 21, it says, death and life death and life. You can't get any more stark or extreme than that. Death and life are what? In the power of the tongue, the power of our words. Think about it. Words have power to wound, hurt. Words have power to heal. Is that not true? Words have started wars. Just words, right? Words have the power to bring peace, to build up, to tear down. Think about, I don't want to go here long today. I don't want to discourage you. But think about what words are doing in our nation today. Think about the place of words in all this that's going on. Another thing that Buddy said in his message last week, he, uh, he told us that there are three entities that can sow. Remember he talked about God can sow, and he really kind of focused on that, how he has sown and continues to sow in our life. And then he talked about the devil, Satan, who is able to sow, and then we can sow. Man has the ability to sow. And one way, I want to focus on this morning, one way that all three of these entities can sow are with words, words that are spoken. In the parable that, that I just referred to, Jesus said that the word of God is the seed and the hearts of men are the soil. Let me say it like this. God has a seed bag of words that he wants to plant in our hearts. His words bring life. He only has good seeds. Are, okay, you with me? The devil has a seed bag of words that he wants to plant into our hearts. His words bring death. And he only has bad seeds. 
But now here's the interesting part. That's God and Satan. I think this is real interesting. We, as humans, have the ability to plant seeds too. But unlike God and the devil, we can plant both good and bad seeds. Isn't that interesting? What power we have. Remember now, we talked about one of the principles, the seed produces after its kind. Like produces like. It's the seed that determines the crop or the outcome. All right? Now, ready to leave classroom? That was classroom. Now, let's go into the lab, shall we? I should have brought a white lab coat with me. But let's go and see how these principles from God and from his word that he has revealed to us, how they apply, how they work in our lives. And I've got two questions that I feel like will, will really serve us this morning, serve you to help us with that. Okay, question number one. Ready. What words are you speaking to and about yourself? Now, here's something very cool, the way God designed it. Here's a little phrase that I came up with when I was thinking about these things. God made it so we can self-seed. <laughs> we can self-seed. We can, we can put seed into our own hearts. How do we do that? By the words we speak. So, what kind of seeds are you planting in your heart with your self-talk? Remember, words are very powerful. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. In the book of James in the New Testament, it's, it talks about the power of the tongue. It sets on fire the course of things, right? So we can self-seed into our hearts. Now, that could be good or bad seed, remember? So what kind of seed are you planting by the words that you speak? into your own heart. There's an interesting uh, Bible word I want to uh, bring to you guys this morning. Again, this might be a refresher to some of you. might be new to, to, to others. But it's a word you come across when you read, <clears throat> especially in the New Testament, it's the word confession. Now, when I say confession, uh, I think most of the time we go negative with it. You know what I mean? We connect it with confession of sin, Right? Or if, you know, some folks were raised in the, in the Catholic Church, you know, there's a thing that it's actually called going to confession, right? And you go in, and you go in to have a session with a priest, you know, it's uh, anonymous, so they don't know who it is, and you, you confess your sins, right? Well, what do we mean by that when we say confess our sins? What we mean is we're admitting, right? We're agreeing, if God says something's a sin and we do it, we're agreeing with God and we're saying, God, I agree, it's a sin, I did wrong, right? And the Bible does teach that. If we confess our sins, 1 John 1, 9, he's faithful and just, thank God, to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, right? Okay, but, but now that's just the negative side of confession. Did you know that there's a positive confession? Not just confessing the sins and the, the terrible, the dirt and all that, you know, so that, you know, God can forgive you and, and, and wipe you clean. No, there's a positive side. You know what? Confession literally means, and it's a Greek word here. I'll throw it up on the screen for you guys. It's homo legeo. I just like to say it. But look it up, homo legeo. And it's really like a lot of Greek words. It's composed of two words put together. Homo meaning the same and logeo meaning to speak. Or to say. So homo legeo, that's the word for confession. It literally means, its simplest meaning is to say the same thing as. Okay? To agree with. So here's what God wants for your life. He wants you to speak to yourself what he says about you. He wants you to, here it is, he wants you to agree with him about yourself. There's where the life is. You know, John 6, 63, I just wrote it down to quote it to you guys. 
I love this scripture. Jesus said, it is the spirit who gives life or who quickens. The flesh is no help at all. It profits nothing. Then Jesus said, the words that I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life. So anything that God would say about you is filled with life. There's no death in it. Remember, he only has good seed, right? So anything God would say to you or about you, it's only life. And that's why God wants you to agree with him. Because, you know, we can speak words that are not of life about ourselves. And when we do that, what are we doing? We're planting bad seed into our own soil, into our own hearts. In the Bible. It's law. What you sow, you will reap. So in light of this, can you understand the importance of the words that come out of our mouths? What we're talking about right now is in connection with our own selves, what we say, our self-talk. Can you see how important that becomes? When you understand how God made things, it's crazy. Now, let me give you a little help in this and a little hint, and I'll give you something before we wrap up, too, that I, that I think will help you guys that you can take advantage of. But right now, let me just give you this. In the New Testament, so what am I supposed to say to myself then, Mike? How am I supposed to agree with God? Glad you asked. In the New Testament, just in the New Testament, that's like what Jesus did when Jesus came and came and died and rose again, you know, what Jesus did for us, all the wonderful things that happened when Jesus came and did that. In the New Testament, there are well over a hundred, there's a hundred plus references to who we are in Christ because of what Jesus did for us, especially referring to people who choose to believe that, right? Now, he did it for everybody, but it really only takes effect in those who choose to believe that. There's well over 100 references to who we are in Christ because of what Jesus did in his death and resurrection. So, here's, here's the hint. Here's the help. Find out what God says about you and begin to say that about you. Say that about yourself. Agree with what God is saying about you. Here's just a sample, all right? Now, again, anything God says is only good seed. It's only life bringing. Do you want life? <laughs> do you want the blood? Yes, we all do. Well, here it is. Here's just a, a real quick sampling. This is all New Testament from the scripture. I can say, because I'm agreeing with God, I am righteous because of Jesus. Not because of that I'm so hot, it's all because of Jesus. Not because I earned it. I am righteous. I'm right with Almighty God because of Jesus. That's what he says about me. I am loved because of Jesus. I am forgiven of all my sins because of Jesus. Listen to this one. I have wisdom because of Jesus. I am healed because of Jesus. Are you seeing the common thread through all this? Because of Jesus? But th these are all things that are true that God has done and what God is saying about you. And he wants you to agree with him because he wants you to have life. I am blessed because of Jesus. That applies to every area of life. I have no fear because of Jesus. I love others because of Jesus. I have patience. <laughs> I have patience because of Jesus. I have peace because of Jesus. You guys get the idea. Now that is just a very small sample of what you will read in the New Testament of what God has said, is saying about you because of what he's done for you through his son, all right? The thing is, here's one way to look at it. If you keep his words in your mouth enough, what God says about you, you agree with him by the words you speak, the seeds that you're sowing, you know what? Eventually, they're going to find their way into your heart, your soil, 
and produce a harvest of life. I'm not saying that you say something one time and it's just all going to be magical. No. But this is like a lifestyle you develop. Most of the words that are coming out of your mouth are in alignment with his instead of fighting against what he wants in your life, right? I don't understand this struggle. <laughs> this is one thing to look at. What are you saying about yourself and to yourself, right? You know, I, I remember one guy, uh, a minister, uh, when I was young in ministry, he said this. He, he kind of grew up in, they invented games to play, you know, kind of out in the country and all, and, and they liked having BB fights, except it wasn't with BB guns. They put the BBs in their mouths, and they'd go around, they'd run around and try to get closer to each other and spit the BBs, you know, at each other. And he said, you know, one time they're, they're out doing that. His mom looks out the window and sees a, you know, buddy, buddy. His name's Buddy. You get in here. You get in here right now. You stop doing that. Oh, yes, ma'am. You know, he comes in and, you know, says, Mom, we're having fun. We're having BB, BB spit and fight. She goes, son, don't you understand? You keep those BBs in your mouth long enough, eventually you're going to swallow them. <laughs> That's what she was concerned about, right? Well, you know what? You keep God's words, what God says about you in your mouth long enough, eventually you're going to swallow them, right? It's going to find, they're going to find their way into your heart. And whatever a man sows, that shall he reap. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, you're talking about all this psychological jazz. I'm not, no, I'm not. This is Bible. All the other stuff that we discover, even psychologically, is only true because it's first true from God. These are laws, these are spiritual laws that God has set into motion, right? Wow, crazy. So, okay, so not only can you sow seeds into your own heart with your words, we can also sow our words into the lives of others, which leads to my second question, probing question. What words are you speaking to and about others? Now, just like self-talk, God wants us to speak to others what he says about them. And guess what? What he says about them is the same thing he says about you, right? And he doesn't want you speaking to and about people things different than what he's saying, right? I can see some of the light bulbs turning on with some of you. Others are right. Yeah, I haven't thought about this in a while. Okay, cool. Success. All right, so... What words are you speaking to and about others? Um, again, God wants us to speak what he says. He wants us to agree with him. And remember, his words are only life. He only has good seeds. So when we're speaking God's words, we're speaking life words. Speak life. Oh, 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 oh. Sowing the seeds of love, seeds of love, sowing the seeds, so, okay, I'll stop. I just had a little moment there, you know, just, uh, I know some of you are wanting me, keep going, you know, I've got, I've got all the things to say, I, and I don't want to get sued, you know, because of copyright infringement, you know, so, anyway, so, another risk, okay, anyway, <clears throat> moving right along. Again, so what are we doing when we're, when we're speaking what God wants us to speak to and about other people? We're agreeing with him. It's the homo legeo thing, right? All right, now, let's get, let's get real personal with this because that's where the help is, okay? Think about your life. Think about your relationships, your human relationships. If you're married, that's the first place you'd probably want to go. Think about your relationship with your spouse. Now, we're thinking about words now. It's just super quiet in here. <laughs> you start talking about marriage, boy. Ooh. So in that marriage relationship, yeah, your spouse, what words have you been speaking to them and about them? How about your work relationships? What's that like? What are the words that you're speaking how about your friends? How about church? You know, our church family, our church relationships. I want you to be thinking about 
your relationships as we talk about this stuff. And I, I feel like God's going to really personalize some things with you guys as we talk about these things this morning, so let him speak to you. But I feel like, for whatever reason, I'm supposed to specifically say this. I'm convinced that, to a large degree, our children are the product of the words that we speak to them and about them. I'm convinced of that. If that's true, if I'm right, it really makes you rethink the whole parental responsibility thing, doesn't it? Our kids are largely shaped by our words. You know, when we were in Nova Scotia, we talk a bit about our time there, and I was a, a, a little league coach for a while, and there was one kid on our team, his name was Ernest. He was really a funny kid. But anyway, so Ernest and his skills were developing, and uh, his batting skills especially. The game was on the line. You know, we had some guys on base, and it was like late in the game, you know, and Ernest is up, you know what I mean? Maybe two outs. Ernest is up, man. And so Ernest steps into the batter's box, you know, and I'm third base coaching. I'm at third base, and I go, come on, Ernest, you can do it. You can do it, Ernest. And he steps out of the batter's box, and he looks at me. He goes, I can? <laughs> you know? I go, that was so weird. You know, I can? And I go, yeah, you can. Step back in there. And I forget what happened, honestly. But, uh, but anyway, I just thought, that just kind of, I just thought, I wonder what's, where that came from. You know, now look, I'm not, maybe that was just a funny thing that he said. I'm not accusing, you know, his parents of being bad parents and, you know, tell him he's terrible and he's a failure, but I don't know, you know, I don't, I don't know. All I know is that words are powerful and our words as parents really, you know, shape our kids. You know, me, when I was a kid, um, I don't know, I don't know especially why, honestly, I really don't, but I would rather be spanked. In a, if the situation called for some discipline, I would much rather have the spanking than being yelled at. Some of you with me on that? I mean, I don't know. I, it was just like when my dad or I just, when they laid into me with words, it was like, oh, uh, it was just like way more hurtful to me. The power of words. So like spank me, please, you know, don't yell at me. Ginny, when she was growing up, my wife, you know, she's still to this day looking to God for help to overcome some of the stuff, you know. And I mean, I'm not saying she had a dark childhood or anything like that, but I'm just talking about how powerful words are. And a lot of times we really don't think about it. You know, Jenny is still at times, one of her buttons that, that really bother her a lot and can be hurtful is if in any situation, any context, she's made to feel dumb or stupid. In any way, it could be something innocent, but if she's made to feel like she's dumb or stupid or she doesn't know or she can't do something, it's just a real sore spot for her. And you know what? When she was growing up, because I talk with her about it because I'm a good husband, <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, I guess you should talk to her about that. But anyway, but you know, she said that in her, she, there are some people in her life when she's growing up that made her feel that way. And you know, those words, they can stick. They can really shape a kid's life. We've all heard of the saying, sticks and stones, finish it. Sticks and stones can break my bones, but words or names, words will never hurt me. What idiot came up with that slogan? I want to know. I mean, we, we quote that like we're proud. Well, words will never hurt. It's totally a lie, man. Totally a lie. You know, physical abuse is terrible. Whenever you hear about it, in whatever context, it is, it's terrible. But you know what? Verbal abuse can be as bad or worse than physical abuse. Why? Because many times the wounds that are incurred are slower to heal. And you know what? Some, and you, maybe you can relate, maybe you know some people in your life that can relate to this, some never have found healing from words long ago. 
Some of you are, are in the process of struggling and trying to overcome some of those words that were not words of life, words of death, and words of hurt spoken into your life, all right? All right, let me, let me wrap it up with one final thought this morning. We've already talked about how Satan, let me just, let me just say he's the enemy of you. He's the enemy of your soul. And he has the ability to sow. We, we've talked about that. One way he does this, a chief, a prime way that Satan does this, he tries to sow seeds into your life, is by introducing his thoughts into our minds. And then ideally, you know what he wants us to do? This is the most effective for him. He introduces his thoughts, thoughts of death, and he wants us to give voice to his thoughts. He wants us to agree with him, homo legeo, but on the dark side. That's what he's after. He knows the power of your words. He knows that by what you say about you, it can plant those seeds into your own heart. He knows that, right? So he, he introduces those thoughts. We all know what that's like. And he wants us to give them power by speaking them out. You know, I, I like what somebody said. Um, I think there's truth in this. They said, thoughts unspoken and not acted upon die unborn. Let me say that again. Thoughts unspoken or not acted upon die unborn. And then I heard, this kind of came back to my mind as I was thinking about these things. Someone said, you know, a bird can fly over your head, but that doesn't mean you have to let it make a nest in your air. <laughs> right? So look, a lot of thoughts that go in and out of your mind, they didn't come from you. Now, you can generate your own thoughts. You can start that. But they, Satan can try to be planting seeds. Other people's words, they can plant thoughts and words, right? So you cannot totally control that, is what I'm saying. You can't totally control every thought, every word that tries to enter your life. But you don't have to let the bird make a nest in your hair. You don't have to receive those words. You don't have to grab onto them. And certainly you do not have to repeat them and give voice to them. The point is, we have the ability, thank God, to reject words the devil and others speak to us that are not aligned with God's words. We can reject them. We, can, we have control over that. But I'll warn you, I'll just tell you right up front, this will take some time and effort to overcome. You know, the Bible, the Bible speaks of it as a process. One way it puts it, it calls it the renewing of our mind, right? Renewing how we think. Change the way we think. Did you know that the word repentance doesn't mean get on your knees and cry and feel sorry? The word repentance, the Bible word means to change your mind. Now, the change of behavior comes out of that. It follows that. But repentance, in its truest sense, is changing your mind about that thing. So God wants us more and more. That's what, why he's given us his words. He wants us to change our thinking. He wants us to change our speaking more and more to agree with him. Because when we agree with him, we're agreeing with life. And we're planting life seeds that will have a life harvest. Are you with me? All right? So we can reject those things, those words that are not from God, that don't agree with God. You know, the Bible puts it another way, and I want to give you one last scripture here. <clears throat> the Bible talks about guarding our hearts. What did Jesus say our hearts are? The soil in his parable, right? Among other things, our hearts are like soil, Words or seeds? Well, the Bible tells us that we need to guard our hearts. Protect our hearts, the soil of our heart, from wrong seeds being planted and growing into a crop, right? Proverbs 4.23, here it is. Guard your heart above all else. In other words, I kind of feel a serious tone here, don't you? It's like above all else. 
Guard your heart above all else. Why? What's, what's the big deal? It determines the course of your life. Why? Because it's soil and it's made to receive seeds. So guard your heart. Guard your heart. Out of it determines the course of your life. Okay? Remember, your heart produces what is planted into it, good or bad. You know, I shared with you guys, uh, I don't like talking about it a ton, but it, it's still a little raw. But with my mom in the later years of her life, she was diagnosed with dementia and uh, our relationship was, was rough. And as much as I love my mom with all my heart, and I knew that she loved me probably more than I love her, you know, I knew that. And yet, what my mom was turning into was not my mom. And sometimes, you know, we'd have interchanges of words. And sometimes the words that would come out of my mom's mouth, that I, even though I knew it really wasn't her, she was changed and it was messed up, I'm telling you what, some of those words, I would walk away from that and I'm like, I'm shredded. I'm wounded. Especially, you know why? Because the ones that we love most, we tend to be more, more vulnerable around, right? We tend to be, our soil tends to be a little more ready and more vulnerable. And when, the, when those wrong words come, oh man, it just, it hurts extra. Somebody at work may have said something, well, yeah, that doesn't feel good either, but man, somebody that you love, it just hurts more. And so, you know, I actually, I actually came to, to a, uh, there was one point where, of course, I'm praying and I'm looking to God for help along these lines, you know, in the midst of all this, and I really, honest to God, feel like I got a word of wisdom from God. And at one point, he said, Mike, protect yourself. And part of me wanted to, like, reject, that can't be God. Protect yourself from your mother? I mean, she's supposed to protect me, you know? But I, you know what? When I, when I grabbed a hold of that, I thought, you know, this is wisdom from God, right? He wasn't saying reject your mother. He, he knew what was going on here. He knew the power of those words. He knew they were seeds, and he knew the vulnerability of the soil of my heart in, at that time in my relationship with my mom. And he says, Mike, protect yourself. So from that, and that helped because there are some times where the words started to come, and you know, I said, mom, you know, before it even, sometimes I messed up and I was sucked into it, sucked in by the devil, and he just loved it. You know, me and my mom going at each other. He's just standing over here. <laughs> just what I wanted to do, right? But you know, but there are times with God's help, where I saw what was going on, and before it started, before it went very far, I would just, I said, Mom, I'd lean over, I'd, she's like just really fueling up and just ready to go, and I'd just lean over, kiss her on the cheek, and said, Mom, I love you, I gotta go now, and I would just walk away. Protect yourself, see? You guys understand the context of that? Man, it's, it's, it can get real messy and complex, but but I believe that was a word from God. Protect yourself above all else. Guard your heart. For out of it flows the issues of life. The course of life is determined. Whew, big stuff, isn't it? The truth is, we are currently experiencing the harvest of seeds that we have, that have been previously planted in our lives by ourselves and by others. So if, here's the moral of the story. If you're not crazy about the harvest you're experiencing, change the seeds you're planting and allowing others to plant into your life. Could you imagine driving, you're driving by, you know, out in the country or whatever, and you see a farmer, you know, he's out there, and, or maybe you're on a bike ride or something, and the farmer's standing there, look at just hands, hands on his hips, looking at his farm his uh, corn crop, you know, and he's standing there, and, and, and you kind of drive by, and you just kind of nod, and you notice he's just sobbing, he's crying, and so you think, what in the world, so you pull over, you know, and you go up to the farmer, and you say, is everything okay, what's wrong, it's my corn, my crop, man, and he's crying, oh, what, you got a beautiful corn, everything looks healthy and good, that's the problem, I don't want corn, I want soybeans, Oh, I hate this corn. I hate this crop. 
dude, it's a beautiful corn crop. I hate it. I want soybeans. Well, dude, dude, what did you plant? Well, I planted corn. Man, you, you got corn. If you want soybeans, if you hate corn, plant. If you want soybeans, plant soybeans. Don't stand there crying all day about, I got corn, I don't want corn, I want soybeans. Right? That's my cute little way of saying, you can change your seed. Okay? You're not thrilled, you're not too fond of the harvest that you may be living in now, you can do something about it. And God wants to help you with that. You know, I believe, I've got this sneaking suspicion, this might be part of it. Might be part of God's help trying to come into your life, okay? If you want what God wants, which is the harvest of true life, speak only words that are aligned with his. Now, here's what I was talking about earlier. Not only did I give you a little sample earlier about who we are in Christ, I have posted uh, in our app and on our website a, a resource for you guys, okay? A lot more than I just gave you earlier with scriptural references attached to it. And so... Um, I, I posted this for you guys, um, saying what God says about you with Scripture, all right? It's on our website. It's under current info. If you go to our website, current info, under weekly announcements. I don't know. I guess we could have put it somewhere else, but I stuck it there, weekly announcements. And there's a link there that you can click on, and you'll get what I'm talking about. And also, you guys got our church app, the Faith Street app. Um, if you go, on, if you take that app out and then you you can pull up the menu bar and it says this week i posted it there if you got your app now you can actually do that and you'll you'll find it there you can hit the link it'll bring that up for you you can download it and uh i wanted to do that as as a help to you guys okay to kind of get you started all right all right well let me close in prayer and then we've got a couple more bits of info to some exciting stuff to share with you guys father i just thank you for um the time that we've been able to share today. And I just thank you for your direction, how you led us today to talk about the power of words. Lord, I know that uh, our lives are a mixture of seed, I'm sure, all of us. Our harvest is is mingled, it's mixed. There's the good and the, the not so good, and maybe the tragic. But Lord, you're you're wanting that to change. You said that in this life, we will have tribulation, we will have trials. That's not going to all just disappear and go away. But Lord, we're so thankful that you made a way for us to have life, even in the midst of the tough stuff. And the way that you made is by agreeing with you and what you say about us. So Lord, help us with that. And Lord, we even pray along with the psalmist who said, Lord, put a, put a watch over my lips. Put a guard over my mouth that I may not speak the wrong things. Help us with these things. Lord, we know it's a, <laughs> a lifelong process of renewing our mind and changing how we plant and how we reap. But Lord, thank you for opening our eyes today and reminding us about these things because you love us and you want us to experience your abundant life. We're thankful and we praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.